Rock City Networks and ToneDef.com.au coming to you from Face of Music 2011 here at the Arts Centre in Melbourne. Joining me, CEO of Music Victoria, Paddy Donovan. How are you? Or Patrick Donovan, let's be formal about it. How are you, sir? <laughs> yeah, good, Ben. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. Now, um, you've done quite a bit already in the yeah. last two days. Uh, yes, yesterday, you uh, facilitated the talk on uh, what bands touring overseas and, and sort of making it overseas. Is that Yeah, sort of premise? more the DIY tours, you know, yeah. um, how the internet sort of enabled bands to book a tour on their own and... Um, got a couple of bands on the panel who I'd seen overseas in Canada and they're bigger overseas than they are here because mm -hmm. they sort of fell through the cracks a bit here. Traditionally the industry like to use the term export ready. Mm -hmm. Don't go overseas unless you're export ready and you've succeeded here and, and all of that but you know the market's a lot more f fragmented around the world now so if you've got a sound that falls between the gaps in, a, in, in Australia um, then there's a good chance they'll love you in the Ukraine or China. Yeah, right. So we had um, Max from the On Fires and uh, Francis from the Resignators and those bands in particular sort of um, do a lot sort of better overseas than they do, they do here and they just gave a lot of tips on, you know, one of the great tips from Max was, um, you know, the hidden costs of, 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 of freebies overseas, yeah. such as the hidden costs of free accommodation. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know. Couch they, surfing. Well, they just <laughs> want to crash for a few hours and they've got a 12 hour drive the next day, but of course it's the fans who want to party with you all night. Yeah, yeah. And probably sleep with you. Yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> You're not going to get a lot of sleep there yeah, before yeah. the big drive. So, um, you know, there were some really good, really good tips um, on, you know, establishing relationships before you go overseas. You know, excess baggage uh, can, you know, ruin the bottom line. So, you know, some bands like the Resonators bought a truck years ago and they uh, a van and they leave it over there. Other people buy, um, you know, a guitar on eBay and get it shipped over there because it's cheap than excess baggage. So it's just a lot of ways of keeping the cost down. Yeah, right. That's ve that's very interesting. Um, and also, you did. Uh, you were on this morning. Uh, great, great music cities of the world. Yeah. You were on that panel. Yeah. So that was cool. That's um, that was uh, myself and Kathy Oak from the Melbourne City Council representing Melbourne, and then we had um, Becky from Liverpool Sound City, yep. um, Daniel Barkowski from Berlin Music Week, and um, Brent Grookey from Austin. So. Yeah four really cool live music cities, um, all very different, and uh, we just sort of got asked questions about, you know, how, um, what makes a great music city, um, how much of it's organic, how much of it's imposed, um, you know, great songs written about the cities, that kind of stuff, yeah. so we sort of explored a few different, a few common themes between all the, all the cities. Yeah, was, uh, now, what, what, was your, what was your take on the rest of, of the cities and how they're represented? We, we've actually spoken to everybody in that panel, and that wasn't by plan, we just happened to do that today. Um, you know, they, they all have a great mutual respect for, for the other cities themselves, but they also uh, just have a, have a great respect for the people that they're on the panel with, including yourself. W what did you take from that panel discussion and, and the well, information? Well, the, out there? the biggest, uh, I mean, the positive thing about Melbourne is, you know, speaking to the other people from the other cities is Melbourne's got the organic, it grew organically, it's got a very natural live music scene. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really get a chance to talk about how you know, uh, all, all the pubs were built, a lot of them in the, in the gold rush, you know, in the 19th century, and, um, and they all had ladies, ladies lounges, and lady, women weren't allowed in the, in, the, in the public bar, and um, so when all that changed, they had all these, all these rooms there, um, and then Lobby Lloyd and Thorpey rocked up and um, said, instead of playing these sort of uh, dances in halls, we have to take everything in, or uh, um, put on your own booze, let's play in these pubs, and take in your own PAs and play bloody loudly. Mm. And, uh, and blow everyone's windows out. Yeah, and basically cheap beer, and you know, Oz Rock was born. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we had that, and around the same time, obviously, uh, Triple R and PBS, the commercial radio, EG started up around the same time. So the infrastructure was in place in terms of the promotion yeah. and, and the infrastructure for the, the ve actual venues. And then punk broke in 77. So, of course, everyone out there thinks, God, you don't actually have to be a trained musician to join a band. And all these people started joining bands. So that's sort of where we came from. Um, you know, Cathy Oak from the Melbourne City Council was talking about how the council has a, a, a music strategy now and what they're looking at doing and how it involves uh, and, and includes um, Melbourne Music Week. And, um, and but, you know, it's pretty clear that the scene was there well before that. It's just fantastic that finally, yeah. you know, Tourism Victoria, Melbourne City Council, governments are actually finally realising that there's a gold mine that we've got here. And, um, you know, Melbourne, Melbourne Music Week is all about, and Face of Music is about trying to bring in people to Melbourne for that week because it's a, it's, a, it's a great secret around the world how great our scene is. And a lot of people don't know it outside Australia. So the idea is to shine the spotlight on it for 10 days each year and um, try and bring people out. Yeah, well, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's been great. And all the responses obviously have been fantastic. Brent Grolke from South by Southwest was talking about He's really just trying to discover what's going on here in Melbourne. And he also said, the funny thing was, he said, 
this is my busiest time of the year. I generally don't leave America. I only left because it was Melbourne when I got offered, you know, to come over and speak. So I think that spe speaks in leaps and bounds for the city of Melbourne. Now, um, you've got you've got a few other. What was the panel you just stepped out of? I, I'm I losing just, track, um, man, because you've done so many of them. Yeah, I just did uh, Ted Gardner. Yeah. Um, amazing character. Yeah. Um, born in Sydney, raised in Melbourne, um, ran the bottom line in Richmond. Uh, in 75 or 76, um, did a bit of road work, um, road managing, um, and then was working with men at work just before they took off. Yeah. So it was interesting asking him, did you really think Land Down Under was going to be an international worldwide hit? Yeah. It's like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that took him over to America, and then he managed a lot of my favourite bands from the 90s. Um, Jane's Addiction and Tool and um, and The Verve and The Bar and uh, Brian Jones Town Massacre and uh, they're all crazy. Those yeah. bands are crazy. You know, like uh, the lead singers are really eccentric and um, all sorts of sort of uh, issues with some of those bands. Managing the unmanageable, you know. So yeah. it was fantastic hearing him talk about all that. And it was fairly accidental for him that you know he went over there with uh, with business um, with Midnight, Mid, uh, sorry with men at work on business as usual and um, you know first job over there was with Frank Zappa so told a lot of great stories um, and then he moved back in 2007 and now he's working with some sort of local prog bands yeah. and it's excited by the sort of new social media and the new sort of um, new business landscape so um, yeah it was great that he's back in Melbourne and you know interesting to see how much to hear from him how much Melbourne's changed yeah. in 25 years. I bet it has too, yeah. Um, now, what's we won't keep you too much longer because I know you have prior engagements, uh, so thank you for giving us your time. My pleasure. Uh, what's happening with Music Victoria over the next 12 months? We'd like an update on that, please. Okay, well, uh, oof, we've just finished. We're coming towards the end of a really intense period. Yeah. And um, as of sort of this afternoon, uh, we've just finished a lot of priorities. A lot of things really came to a head at uh, mm -hmm. Face of Music over the last two days. Um, we published a uh, Melbourne Music Guide. Um, have I shown you a copy of that yet? No, but I will have you, here we go, look at there this. There you go, hot Beautiful. off the presses. So, um, look, I went on a fact-finding mission to Austin, Texas in yeah. March, and um, basically, Austin and, 20 years ago, Austin and Melbourne were considered two of the great music. Since then, Austin's had all of this support from council and government, and it's gone like this. Yeah. It's official mottos, live music capital of the world. And Melbourne hasn't had any support, and it's sort of gone like this. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Anyway, how do we get back up to where Austin is? So that's why we flew, you know, I personally invited Brent Grawke to come out and looking after him for nine days. Um, what, he's meeting with the Melbourne City Council councillors, giving them advice on what they do over there. Um, we're meeting here at the Art Centre with all heads of the Art Centre and very the high art industry of Melbourne, and he's giving advice to them about, you know, and they love it. Everyone's just like... Well, Austin did it, so, um, you know, we Melbourne should do it. do it, yeah. And um, they're really listening to the Austin sort of plan. So let's have a look at that. Over there, Austin had the uh, Austin Music Guide, yeah. and it was the very first thing I, oh, I said when I came back. Yeah. You know, Tourism Victoria should be basically publishing one of these. So they uh, sponsored us, Melbourne City Council sponsored us. So it's the Melbourne's Melbourne Music City, is yep. the brand, um, and it's a guide to basically live music in Melbourne. So we mapped it around uh, the seven music hubs. So, you know, it's sort of aimed at tourists or people from outside Melbourne who don't know where to go. So we've got the seven music hubs and uh, it's pretty rock and roll. We've got guitar picks, you know, black for the venues and red for all the music stores. So okay. anything you need to know about music. Um, and then at the back we've got um, outer suburban ones and then we've got regional ones and then we've got this pretty cool uh, resource page with everything else you need to know. And then we've got uh, music friendly hotels. Well, wow, that's fantastic. Music festival calendar. Slam Rally and Melbourne Music Timeline. So that's you, just sir. hit the streets. So we we, we, just, we got some some support for that, and um, we really wanted to get it done. So 500 delegates who have been here, we've given it to them all. So they've got somewhere something to show them around. Yeah. So that's come to a head. Um, we've just uh, you know been working very very hard on Face of Music and promoting that, and the whole idea that there's three events happening at the same time: Melbourne Music Week, Face of Music, and Ormi, yeah. and the idea of bringing three events together for a sort of super week of music and trying to sort of attract people from overseas. So um, we've also had uh, a couple of meetings here. Uh, we had a really interesting one yesterday with musicians um, and venue owners talking about door deals and how little musicians get paid yeah. and 
whether there is sort of uh, and what the overheads are for the venues and the musicians. So that was a fairly fiery conversation. Uh, and that, all, was, yeah. that all came about from the live music report that came out a few months ago that basically said everyone's making money out of music except for the musicians. So, um, you know, we had a meeting there. So that's what it is about here. We've got all the industry here and uh, we, you know, encourage everyone to come along and we sort of deal with sort of certain ongoing issues. Um, there was another great panel on, um, on planning law and basically what needs to be done to make sure in 25 years that Melbourne can still have these venues and they don't get shut down yeah. because of noise. So um, a lot's been leading leading to this. Um, sort of for the rest of the year, it's um, tying tying up a few loose ends and um, preparing for next year. Um, but we've got a two-year strategic plan, so um, you know we're going to be doing a, going going to be doing a whole lot of things. But I suppose I'll just sort of. I've just finished a whole lot of work and uh, we're really happy to with relax. that. And then we'll just poof, finish off the year and then sort of start again next year. But, um, you know, the government has basically said we've got to October to be um, work towards self-sustainability. So one of the big things we're going to have to look at is um, actually bringing in, you know, increasing the membership, getting, um, you know, our message out there so everyone knows who we are and what we do and actually look at sort of um, bringing in some sponsors. Um, so, you know, that's 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 going to take up a fair bit of time early next year. Well, um, I've, I've no doubt that uh, Music Victoria will will achieve that with uh, you leading the charge, my friend. But uh, on that note, I think we should let you go. All right, mate. Because so, you do have things to do. Yeah, and the, uh, the website's musicvictoria.com.au. We'll put uh, that up there. Keep an eye out for the uh, Melbourne Music City Guide around town. And there's also a, um, a uh, downloadable um, uh, version that you can get from the Music well, Victoria website. We'll, uh, we'll put the links up, make yeah. sure and direct everybody there. Thank you so much cool. for my little book that I get to go and uh, Good on you, ben. get to use. Patrick Donovan, CEO of Music Victoria. Always a pleasure to have you uh, on the couch or wherever we end up finding you, uh, or you finding me, vice versa. It's, uh, it's for Face of Music 2011, uh, Rock City Networks, and tonedef.com.au.